Bump Love is brought to you by Unlimited Internet at unbeatable prices. Dial star 125 hash to activate your monthly unlimited internet. Airtel, a reason to imagine. Hello and welcome back to Bump Love. If you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, now is the time to do so. Especially if you're interested in content concerning parenting, uh, navigating life as a woman, and generally family dynamics. We, before we even start, we just owe our fabulous look to fashion episode and shoe puzzle, <laughs> so big up to them. And we would also like to appreciate Golden Tulip for allowing us this lovely space to have our thought-provoking conversations. Yeah. And today's conversation is one of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so trigger warning. <laughs> We're going to speak about toxic family dynamics. And toxic family dynamics, in the scope of this conversation, refers to unhealthy family interactions which are characterized mostly by poor, destructive or ineffective interactions amongst family members. And this can look like uh, bullying, manipulation, aggression, control, and so many others that we will speak about as we delve deeper into the episode. And because of the weight of the conversation, we thought it pertinent to add to our voices expert advice. So here with us, seated, is uh, Sande, Miss, how do you like to be called? Miss, Mrs. Miss, <laughs> Miss Sande Asingwire. She's married, she's a mother of two boys, and she's a partner and psychologist at New Dawn Psychotherapy and Counseling Farm. You're welcome to the show. Yes. <laughs> yes. And even though New Dawn uh, offers services, uh, therapy services, in a wide scope, as Miss Sande is mostly specific to young adults and teenagers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So actually what um, provoked us to have this conversation was a DM that we got on Bump Love. So Angie, can you share with us the DM? Yes, please. Hi, I'm a big fan of Bump Love. I'm an orphan. I lost my dad over 14 years ago, and I have been with my single mother all this time, and she has raised me, provided everything which I am forever grateful. I love my mom. I love my mom so much that I feel she's my everything, that when I, pr when I am praying, I first pray for her life. She has suffered to bring me up with the little that she has, and but the problem is she is carrying a lot of anger towards me. She treats me like her property. She's sensitive to criticism from members in the community. She's controlling on how I should dress, what I should do in my life because she believes I am what I am because she worked hard. She wants me to want what she wants. She's controlling. She doesn't want to listen because she thinks I am young. I can't advise her or anything. I am now done with campus, but didn't want to go home because I felt I wouldn't be happy. But later went back and she repeated the same. I have tried to confront her and we ended up quarreling. This has affected my self-esteem. I can't express myself in people and I don't feel excited to go, to go home like other children. Please, talk about toxic mothers. I need help. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So ladies, what advice would you give our dear Anonymous on how to navigate this situation without shaking or breaking the core relationship that she has with her mother? I have typically seen and experienced that kind of family dynamic more especially amongst single mother households. I have seen, seen it a lot. And this is mostly because, so I've lived my life as a single mother, predominantly, I, I should say, although I co-parent, I have maybe not had that struggle of the mother who's looking after her children single-handedly. You know, 
This is physically, emotionally, mentally, financially. I have backup as a co-parent. But single mothers usually come to talk to me regardless because I kind of have some insight. We might not be all struggling the same way, but uh, my dynamics, are, I, I, can, I can empathize you know, more than somebody who's lived pre predominantly in a typical two-parent household. Yeah. I, one of the things I have found is that when the breakup happens between the mother and the father, the mother remains a human being. She's emotional but she's also a mother. And emotions are usually projected to those nearest to you. So in this case, it's usually the children. Usually the children. And the form of, of the projection varies. I've seen that spectrum vary so much, but the one that gets me all the time is the one, the victim mentality on the mother that is passed on to the children, which causes the children to now develop a parenting heart that they have to wear. Yeah. You will be shocked. I have seen five-year-olds parent yeah, they are their parents, parents. Yes. Oh, yes. because she's taken so long in the wallow and bitterness and emotional phase. Mm. Now she can't parent. Mm. Or what she thinks she's doing as parenting isn't really. It's mostly controlling. And, and, and as a child who has come out of your womb, you want to see your mom happy. So now you're even now, you take pity over the mom. But you're a child. You don't know any better. You can't control yourself. The only person in that dynamic who can control themselves is the parent. It's only the parent. And that relationship goes on like that. You will never, even, even something as small as, mom, I'm, this, dress I like, this is a dress I like to wear. Mm. Your mom saying you're not wearing that dress. It's not that they're not, there's a, you're not wearing that dress from a parenting aspect, but there's a not wearing that dress from a controlling mm. aspect. Yeah. Because now they, they, they want, you, you become their, their lifeline. You become their, an object that they, hand, they hang on to. I have seen women anchor onto their children. When a woman comes and tells you that I would not have survived if not for my children, well, let me tell you, that phrase on its own is so problematic. So problematic because you pass on the burden of your emotions onto a child. Now guess what, that child two years, three years, four years, you, you failed as a 30 year old woman to manage your emotions. Now you've given a part of that burden to somebody whose cortex, whose brain, whose heart has not even developed. Sure. Yours is developed, but you failed. Sure. But now you're passing it on to somebody. That childhood trauma, just in that switch of dynamics, is so severe, it, it goes with them for a very long time. So I have seen women who have come to me and have talked to me, and they don't even realize what they're doing. Yeah. Bless them, bless them. They don't realize. And because I knew that thing was um, a thing, I remember when it came to me, I was aware of it. I was aware of it. And I know that there, might, there was a point there where that dynamic could have happened between me and my son, but I became aware of it so quickly and I just cut. cut. I capped it so quickly because when I started to read more about it, I went into counseling, actually, at the time of my separation, I went into counseling, and it was so clear that now I was able to, to go through my emotions yeah. with somebody else, yeah. to talk through my emotions, so that when I come back home to parent, now I'm a parent. Mm. You're not telling him your problems. Yeah, and it's not even about telling problems, it's even just the way that you act, the way that you behave. You know, your child, you're moody, yeah. you're upset, you're projecting, you're sad. And you know, one of the worst ones, by the way, is sad. Yeah, yeah. There is that moody anger and the bitter, and you shout at your kids, get, get out of the way, I don't want to... Direct aggression. There is that sadness and the heart that children lean into. Now that becomes your relationship between you and your parent, your single parent. So you're always, you're always, so what you think is, I love my mother, is I pity my mother. I feel sorry for my mother. So all your actions are hinged on the fact that your mother is a victim. So I need to do right by her. You put yourself, as a child, by the way, you come before your parents. As a child, your parents are the ones who wanted to have you. 
You did not ask to be here. They are not your problem. They are not. They should be able to figure out their shit. It's not your job to figure out your parents' shit. I'm talking to you as a child. What, did she give her name? No. No. Yeah, yeah but anonymous. since uh, anonymous, so anonymous at this point, since she's now gone through all this, what she really needs to do is me. I would say, I, me, I believe a hundred percent in therapy mm -hmm. and in counseling. Yeah. So she needs that is childhood trauma. She's yeah. gone past yeah. campus. She said yeah. campus. Yes. So that's how many years? Eighteen. We're now eighteen years. She's 20, 21, 23, 23, 23, 23 of of of. Ch carrying ch trauma on your back yeah. and you don't even know what's going on That's because true. you feel you owe it to your mother to be a good person mm. and you know they have that good you know where people pleasers yes. they are parent pleasers yes. yeah now you become automatically a parent pleaser you yeah. want to do right by your mother yeah. all the time all the time and your your sense of um of of, of goodness can only be ticked yeah. by her, by her. Mm. only she's the marking guide yeah. If she ever says you're 20%, you believe you're 20%. 20 if she says you're 150, and guess what? They never give you 100%. Which is Those so moms sad. never yeah, give you 100%. So, so me, I would encourage you, that trauma that you carry, I can't unburden you. Seek expert help, seek advice. We have New Dawn here. She'll tell us more about their services, but there are many more like them, many more. So you choose the one that you're aligned with, the counselor that you're mostly aligned with, to unburden yourself. Mm. And what they tell you in those closed doors, <laughs> I suggest yeah. you implement. There's, there's, there's honestly nothing as heart-wrenching as having a toxic mom. Mm. You can have a toxic relationship, yep. toxic friends, but having a toxic mom, there's a, a toxic parent. A father could be toxic and you go away with it. There's a way in which a mom, so. because they because give birth to you. You, you, see, you get, yeah. like this yeah. is a mother. You need, all you need is love from them and then you get toxicity. Mm. It's really crazy. My advice to Anonymous would be for her to know that it's not her. She's not the problem. Mm. It's definitely the mom. Once you understand that, then it's easy for you to deal with all this. Like you can manage mm. that toxic environment because now you know you're having grace with your mom because you know it's also coming from somewhere. Mm. You're wondering why she's... So if you understand that you're not the problem, because many times you blame yourself. You're like, I think, yeah, I think mom is right because she's the one who mm. gave birth to me. Mm. If she says, she yeah, How can if she, she says wrong? I'm 20, yeah, I believe it. It's easy for you to believe because she's the one who brought you to to this world mm. so and she even knows how to trigger you you oh, yeah. get it eh? mm -hmm. yeah so my advice to her is um for me anyway prayer prayer would be the go-to mm. once you pray about something mm. you find grace there's grace for you to sail through mm. and then you will pray for your parent that whatever it is that triggers them mm. because you're not the only one there's many I'll, and I'll share later because for me, I've, I've been surrounded with people that have toxic mothers mm -hmm. and it breaks my heart all the time. Mm -hmm. you, it's difficult to talk to them and they understand. I mean, mm -hmm. you're just a child. Mm -hmm. You do not know what I've gone through because they've gone through so much trauma, especially that single motherhood, that mm -hmm. single, like you, they are dealing with the husband that left them, dealing with all the stress of like, I've, I've given up everything to take you to school. How dare you? not do this for me they mm. expect you to give them they can never get enough mm. get enough of what you're doing they will complain about everything the, what you do is never enough for yeah. me that's what hurts me so mm. i would advise that pray about it mm. with prayer you win you honestly mm. can't lose mm. but also find grace with yourself know that you're not the problem mm. then you will be able to to conquer yeah um yeah. <clears throat> i would say this because um Either I've been in toxic relationships or a toxic environment or found the way she speaks about it. Mm. But clearly something isn't right. And if she doesn't understand what is not right right now, all she's doing is postponing problems. So I'm thinking, first of all, you need to step away or move away from the environment. Mm. Then sit down and start connecting yeah you know sometimes you're always angry mm -hmm. and you ask yourself why? why where is it coming from mm -hmm. maybe it's because there is this human being who has the ability to hold a remote and just press it and you rewind mm -hmm. and you forward mm -hmm. and you rewind mm -hmm. 
So if you're living with this person, every time you come out, you want to vent. Mm. Yeah. So it's important that you first go inside, look at yourself, and then remember at the end of the day, the most important person is you. Mm. Yeah. People who are in relationships like that, especially with parents, you always think you are the problem. Yeah. You sure. are the problem. Yet the truth is, the parent could be the, problem. the problem. So yeah. if you can go back inside, find out who you are, what are the things that trigger you, then, of course, seek yeah. professional help. Mm. Then start the journey. Because if you don't, I can promise you, you will be your mother 30 years from now. Yeah. That's For it. Sure. Yeah. That's yes. it. For oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, which is quite For scary. Sure. I mean, I want to say that um, <clears throat> first and foremost, you reaching out to ask for help is you're like 10 steps in your journey. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think that not many people are courageous enough to say, again, like we've said, this is your mom. When we are born into this world, our moms are everything. Yeah. They are the beginning and the end. My mom is correct about everything. But now you've noticed something about the authority in your life. The person, the one person that you look up to and has been your everything, has sacrificed yeah. for you. You're noticing things that are unhealthy. Kudos to you for looking for help. And I think I just wanted to commend you and say you are on the right path. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, just also to emphasize the, the, the whole idea of getting help, I think cannot be overemphasized because this is not something that you can do for yourself. If you're around 23 now, there's a lot of things for you to unpack. You need support and you need somebody oh, yeah. who can support you on this journey without judgment and without being critical. Because again, yeah. yes, you feel like you are being treated unfairly, but you want to protect your mom. It's yeah. such a... A confusing place to be so cool. mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. it's very confusing because like I, I i love my mom i respect her i, I honor her yeah. but then she's doing these things that are strange yeah. and i want to help her but i also want to help myself, myself. i don't want her to be judged yeah. because again i still revere her as my mom yeah so i want a space where i'm going to feel safe and usually finding a third party who maybe doesn't know you uh, personally is a good place to start um and also as I was thinking about this conversation, there's a scripture that came to mind, which I apply, by the way, in even other relationships. Yeah. It's somewhere in Romans. It says, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Mm. Yeah. As far as, as far as it depends on you, live at, live peace, at peace with everyone. With everyone. Yeah. Yes. And so what I'm trying to emphasize here is that you have a part to play, but there's only so far that you can go yeah. as the daughter. You cannot control how your mom behaves or how she reacts yeah. to situations. You can only control yourself. And so as far as it depends on you, do what you need to do, which is yeah. seek help, yeah. pray, yeah. you know, keep away from, from the environment. I actually really do advise that you step away step from the environment. I know it is confusing and this is your mother and, you know, your dad died and she has been there for you. But in order for you to, you know, before we rise, before we get out of, toxic situations things have to sort of become worse or you have to sort of go through a painful period before things get better yeah and I know many times as we seek healing we're looking for solutions we want like an easy way we want a way where maybe we don't have to separate you know maybe maybe I don't have to go through this period where I'm telling other people about my mom's business but sometimes it's the sacrifice that you have to make in order for you to come to a place of healing. So I am all for all of that. Stay away from the situation, but understand that there is only so much that you can do. Don't, don't carry the entire weight of your mom's healing because it really yeah. does not depend on you, on you entirely. There's a part you have to play and, and I think seeking help for me would be the first place to start. Yeah. Mm, just to add on briefly, because you're worried about judgment, mm -hmm. know that your mental health comes first in mm. this situation. Because many people will judge you. Oh my God, you know, they will go and speculate. Mm. This girl has not seen me in ages. Mm. You're protecting your sanity and your mental health. Yeah. So, yeah. protect you. Yeah. Yeah. Sunday, what, what did you think when um, you listened to this daughter's cry for help? And what would you say to her? Thank you. So for me, when I, when I listened to this story or when I read it, I felt like this is so many of us, we are uncomfortable to talk about these things. But I'm sure most of us have been in this relationship where your mother kind of manipulates you. And most times in, in, um, in situations where they have been having a bad relationship with your father, 
they will give their side of the story you will not know the other side of the story so they will sometimes manipulate you then you will feel guilty and you feel responsible then you start being the parent to your mother your mother is sad so you come with one mommy what's happening but you shouldn't you shouldn't be in that situation mm. and I, I remembered for me for my son is four years old there's a time I came from work and I was so moody and I reached home and then he came to my bedroom and he said he told the younger brother Sean don't talk to mommy right now mommy is not fine and I thought you know like I went back yeah. and I said this is not okay yeah. and I went to him and I said no I am sorry please come and talk to me so many times mothers do that with so many of their children and I can't I don't want to pinpoint and say you know it's this and this but we have seen that many times in the counseling rooms you know mm -hmm. yeah so the, the mothers I think we can do better yeah. what I would um, tell anonymous to do one is her situ she knows her situation, so we can't really advise her generally, yeah. but this is maybe for everyone else. One is that so we may need not to antagonize the relationship, so you may need to take a break away from wherever she is, or maybe stay with an auntie or a relative who may understand you for now, as you figure out yourself. You need to be in a safe space where you need to, you know, who are you without your mother? Who am I without yeah. mommy? Who am I? So you may need to find that safe system. I'm not saying cut off connection, but also limit communication with her because she's going to intoxicate you and you'll be that same person that you're complaining about. Mm -hmm. Because they say most times the parents that we, we, we despise the most, we end up becoming those exact parents yeah. Yeah. because we don't know any better. Yeah. You know, that's the environment you've been raised in. So you become that environment that you're used to. The other thing is that obviously let her seek help she can yeah. see a counselor a therapist but also have a very good social support mm -hmm. a very good social support talk to your friends yeah. who are going to listen to you without judgment because you need to take care of yourself yeah. if you don't take care of yourself you're going to break down yeah. and then you're going to hate yourself because you don't know what's really going on with you. you're going to blame yourself maybe i'm the one who has if mommy didn't have me she would be happier she has sacrificed so much for me yeah. so you need to you know to, to to discover yourself to find your happiness you said something about um, moms were opening up to their children. So if you're going through a thing, mm -hmm. um, and I, I, so I wanted to play devil's advocate, but also ask a question. Mm -hmm. So I understand because your children give you pure love. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no judgment. Mm -hmm. So you see their innocent face and they're really concerned about you. They're like, mommy, you don't look happy. And then, you know, somebody has cared for you. Mm -hmm. So no one had asked you that day how you are doing, but your child has asked you, and so you yeah. feel the need to open up to them, not knowing that they don't know how to process that emotion. Um, for some people, obviously, it's severe because they only talk to their children or they burden their children with their emotions. Could it be that those adults either have not formulated coping mechanisms, they have not really cared to create um, social support, uh, because for you to tell your child what has happened or transpired between you and their father, first of all, is it's not fair to the child. You're putting them in a very awkward position. Um, is it possible that they have not cultivated that social support? I've met people who are okay having just like a one friend who they also talk to like twice in a year. And it's like, I mean, I don't have many friends. And they are cool with it. And I'm just like, that's not okay. You know, you don't just need friends so that you can post pictures on Instagram. You need friends to so, support yeah. you, in, you know, in tough times. Yeah. I, I think for me, for the parents, is most times we, we don't know what we are doing to the children. We are, we are ignorant of what we are doing to them. But you telling your child issues about you and your husband, let the child see their father in a different picture. Yeah. Like, don't let them see your, their father as your husband. Let them see their father as, as their, their father. father. Yeah. They are not part of that business. So don't tell them issues about the things that don't concern me, yeah. you know, that don't concern them, sorry. So talk to them as children, but also it, when they reach a certain age, we give age appropriate information. Yes. The information that you give a four year old is not what you'll give a 20 year old. Yes. Because right, like right now, the conversations I have with my mother are different from what I had with her when I was like 10. Yes. Sometimes they will shield you, but even you as you grow up, you start seeing things and then you're asking yes. questions. But it's not also that mothers should now manipulate you and most of them do that. They will manipulate you to start looking at your parent, at the other parent in a different, a different yes. angle. Yes. But also children can be manipulative. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Children yes. also yes. manipulate their yes. parents. Yes. <laughs> so I think that's also a conversation that you will need to have another. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so now that we've, you know, kind of spoken to um, 
anonymous and we are going to continue yeah. speaking to her mm. through this episode in different ways i think now let's first talk about ourselves let's look within <laughs> <laughs> and i know this might be a little stormy for mm. us sometimes we sit here and give you our experiences but we do that not to shame anyone mm. or not to blame anyone not to point fingers at our people no it is just to show you that these things also happen to us or around us mm. and let's you know navigate those dynamics together mm. yeah so ladies has any of you been in a toxic or unhealthy family situation or experienced a toxic family member within either your nuclear or your extended family dynamic? And if so, how have you chosen to navigate through those waters? Mm -hmm. Don't fear, guys. <laughs> Don't fear. You are protected. Right. You, you are, are protected. <laughs> <laughs> after this show, they look at me. You may not have a home after. Yes. You may not have a home after. Yes. I know. <laughs> no. Okay, I, 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 I will share. Um, the truth is, I don't think there's any family that doesn't have, you know, a tough or toxic, toxic relative yeah. or situation. Um, where my nuclear family is concerned, that's my siblings and my parents. No, I don't. We never experienced anything toxic. Mm. Uh, I think my parents yeah, did well to, like, to shield and protect us. And I think that that shielding and protecting went as far as even toxic relatives. Mm. Um, I do know that our home was, you know, always had people. My parents were taking care of their, their relatives, their relatives' children. And so we had people coming through our home. Um, and to be honest, I only became aware of um, toxic relatives or difficult relatives when I was much, much older. In fact, in my married life, because now I sit down and have conversations with my mom and she's like, oh, that person. So like, you know, when people live with you and you're like, they're behaving funny. Maybe they're pulling their mouths and they're having arguments and I don't, I'm not aware of what's going on, but clearly something is, is happening and my mom is sorting it out and she, she never made it her business to now come up and sit down and say, oh, by that cousin of yours is being disrespectful or whatever. Mm. Um, so I cannot speak, like I can't say, oh, I have an uncle who did this, or I have, I just know of relatives who maybe gave my mother a hard time, um, spoke ill of her, uh, tried to destroy you know, her relationship with my dad. She has made me aware of some of those people. In terms of how we deal with them, I guess my mom. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, we pray for them. I mean, it's so I think we, we find support with each other. Like if something happens, if there's a blow up, um, now she's comfortable to tell me because she knows I can take it. Um, but when Have we... seen the blow up happen ever? No, I only hear about it after. But now when we need to show up for these individuals, my mom is like, it's the right thing to do. Yeah, let's show up. And you know, there's always that struggle. And I think the thing that makes it easier is we are able to talk about it. Mm. I'd be like, but mom, I'm really struggling. I don't want to. And she's like, I also don't want to. But this is how we've been raised. This is the right thing to do. So let's go show up um, and do the right thing. And then we can always come back to our home um, and maybe not have to deal with them. So there's an issue of separation where you're like, you know what? I have tried everything I can for this person. And my mom is very good at that. She will try. Yeah, till the end where it's like, okay, now I, I've done what I can, so I will love you from a distance. Mm. And so I know how to do that as well. Mm. They will come to our homes, they'll visit, and we'll take their care of them like, like nothing has they happened. They did nothing. Yeah. So there's, there's just that do the right thing. You're not going to see the person every day anyway, mm. because you have created that boundary where it's like, you're my family. I, I love you and I will love you from a distance, but I'm not going to treat you like your sin deserves, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. My mom, God rest her soul in peace, before mm. she passed away, I don't remember her being toxic, mm. to be honest. Mm. My mom was not toxic at all. Like, I, I tried to remember any toxicity in the nuclear family, mm. and I, I didn't seem to get to anything, really. Mm. It's just a few things here and there, but there was no toxic, I don't remember no toxic behavior from her. May your soul rest in peace, mom. You did us really, really well. Mm. But from extended family, a lot, a lot, a lot of it. <laughs> aunties, uncles, mm -hmm. and I remember one vividly, um, a few months before she passed, 
Um, I think she had land wrangles. They mm. know when it comes to land wrangles. Mm. <laughs> land wrangles from where from her had her, her dad, her late dad had left them land. land yeah. And of course I think they were fighting with the brothers and because when, 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 when I grew older, we started to have these conversations very easily. We talk mm. about anything and everything. So, of course, when she's pissed, she will call you and tell you, can you imagine what this guy did? Mm. Oh, my goodness. I went there and told them off. Like, Bambi, they were really toxic because it could kill her and, mm. and she needed someone to talk to mm. and would be her friends that she would talk, talk, talk to often. But I also know that I have very, very, very many aunties who are very selfish. Mm. You go to parties and you hear statements like, you never come to see me. What, what, what? And I'm mm. thinking, really? Do you know what's like, do you life? even know? Mm. Yeah, like their toxic traits come to you. They make you seem like you're too bad. You're not a good daughter. Mm. You don't come to visit. So those are some of the toxic, toxic things, I, the mm. traits I get from people. And you're just thinking, really, did you ever come? To, do you even know what's going on in my in life? My life. Before <laughs> you want to project it on me. Yeah. Guys, I've been sick for ages and none of you care. Yeah. Do you know that I was also sick on my sick bed the other day <laughs> you and you didn't came. come to, and to even check? If I wasn't sick, I have <laughs> Right? That. Yeah. So, yes, I've experienced a few hmm. here and there. Hmm. hmm. <laughs> so, as I said, um, a lot has happened in the past five years mm. that has made me. Um, really look inside to find out why certain things happen. You know that I started falling sick quite a lot. And when, when the topic came up, I had already found out the reason why I was falling sick. But I never wanted to equate it to anything that happened to me as I was growing up. But when we, you know, sat and unpacked it, so I was with my mom the other day, we are cuddling in the bed, and I told her, I told her how I felt. And the first thing she said was, I'm sorry, I didn't know any better. And I could feel her pain. Mm. I have a tendency you know the way people say, oh, I've got insomnia. You don't know what insomnia, insomnia is. is. It's not sleeping one day or two days. It's, it's a real problem. Mm. My problem is I can literally work myself to death. Okay. Well, like I haven't slept for a week. Child, if you hadn't slept for a week, you'd be, be dead. dead. Yes. But when I get into it, I'll get into it, and then I can't stop, I can't stop, this has to be done. And then when we started, you know, going through it, I realized my mom had me about this age. By the time I was mm -hmm. 10, she was already in her 50s. Mm -hmm. So she always, much as I was, you know, like super loved, very, 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 very super loved and spoiled, she also had this thing of, you have to be ready for the world. Mm -hmm. You have to be ready for the world. And my mom is very strong and very hardworking. So mm. I kept trying to create that. Because even like now when I'll be at work and I'm feeling tired, I look at Coco and I'm like, but if mommy was here, would she stop working? Mm. Wow. And I'll keep pushing. So you only realize this later that what you saw as something positive, who doesn't want a good, I mean a hardworking working woman? woman. Yeah but the degree to which mm. you do it. So now you hear people saying, oh, these days, you know, Angie will not be at the side. And, and I'm like, <laughs> you can talk until Jesus comes. I have been working 15 years constantly, yeah. but now we've created processes to ensure yeah. that the human being is able to rest. Yeah. So my mom knows I love her. Everybody mm. does. Mm. But in loving me, I created a demon mm. that just couldn't stop. But thankfully, because when you find out what your problem is, mm. you're able to seek help. Yes. Yeah. But you know that seeking help, it's like pulling out a, you know this last tooth here? Oh mm. my God. Of like, <laughs> because it is so ingrained in you. Yeah. I can't understand how somebody, my whole life, I'd never seen my mom in bed. 
I'd never seen my mom sick. So even when people like now my employees are like, I'm sick, I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah. Me when I get sick, I postpone the sickness until after the project. That is that is how we used to work. Yeah. So I love my mom, but that particular aspect and I'm glad that I've been able to turn it around to my advantage. I will work hard, but I will also ensure that the self is taken yeah. care of. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> breathe, 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 child, breathe. It's out, it's out, it's out. You know, it's out. Yes. Okay, yeah. So, like, me, as I think, um, I, I went into my family to look at the toxicity from within, and I know it's there in my nuclear family, like seasons of okay. of it. Mm. But as a family, we have recognized some of those toxic traits or the triggers to the toxicity. And we kind of have found some dance mm. around it because we love each other, we were raised in love, and we have sworn to stick together healthily. Yeah, yeah as both as individuals and as a, as a family. But, uh, so, but when I was thinking through it, I was like, ah, that's boring. <laughs> or let me speak to the one that uh, I know for sure that I, I, I was able to navigate and create boundaries around my extended family. Um, my siblings and I, in our formative years, two of my siblings, um, Nalule Sonko and myself, um, we were raised, born and raised, in Southern Africa, South Africa. In Abantustan, in that time it was during apartheid, the worst, worst of apartheid, the apartheid regime. Um, in Abantustan, in that time, blacks didn't live with white people. So we lived in the black, the real ghetto you know, hardcore communities. You know, I can be and I tell you, I was born and raised in South Africa. They're like, hey, yeah, yeah, you people, you are rich, you are what? No, mm. we were living in the, where the real hardcore ghetto black population lived. The ones that had no rights to anything. No rights, no privileges, no nothing. But because my parents went there as expatriates, this was during exile, so my parents ran away from Uganda. Those people that Museveni speaks about, who went out to uh, well, it, it's sausages they run away instead of fighting they run away to it's sausages yeah we are here it is my family it, it is us it is my my mother and father <laughs> they run away so be, and that is because they were educated and they were well educated and so that they were looking for expatriates in south africa the white people were too expensive to pay the black people did not have the education training or experience but the other African people from other African, the other African countries were able to do the work at much less pay mm. than the white people. So if you find, you'll find that there's a period there where many African families have relatives in South Africa because of that period. And this was across Africa. So my parents found themselves there. So because of that dynamic, we went to to school, my parents were working amongst white communities, much as we lived. And please note, this is like a drive from, in Uganda, how would I say? You would be on the road maybe for like two hours oh. to work. Oh, wow. Yeah, so because the white good. communities were, like, yeah, to ginger, it was long distance. Mm. Because the two communities could not mix. It was real apathy, real, real apathy. But because we were, stu we were children of expatriates, we went to white schools. So we were, we lived in the, we, 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 we studied and my parents worked in the developed white communities. Mm -hmm. But because of that, and that went was for a long time, my first language is English. Mm -hmm. My first language is English. Mm -hmm. I said maybe my first word in Luganda, I'm a Muganda by tribe. My first word in Luganda, I think I said at 10 years old. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes. Now this is where the toxicity comes in. We moved to Uganda. And my family, my mother and my father's family, coincidentally, my mother and father are the ones that really rose. The ones who were educated, well-trained in the family, you know? But we, even if we have more people like them, they left Uganda and chose to stay there. Okay. My parents, on the other hand, chose to come back, who were the only ones who chose to come back. Now we are faced with relatives who are at a, in a different social class or grouping, can I say, mm. for lack of a better word. 
And now my parents are back home. And my, my parents are close to their relatives. Yeah. So now we go visiting. Yeah. <laughs> now we go visiting. <laughs> my sister and my brother and I totally struggled to integrate with our relatives. Because every time we spoke, we were shamed. Yes. Mm. We were ridiculed. Mm. We were laughed at mm. for not knowing Luga. our mother tongue. Mm. Not that they did not know English. They knew the language. Mm. But it was like an inferiority complex of, oh, you think you're better than us. Mm. This is the one thing we know that you that don't, you know. that you don't have. Let's ring it. Yeah. And they did. Every time we went to visit, they spoke Luganda. Wow. We are children, guys. Yeah. We are kids. Mm. And, you, and you know, in, in within that, that extended family, there were pockets of relatives who used to stand up for us. Yeah. They would, for us, they would speak to us in English. And our bonds with those particular ones are really strong. We are, they grew. Yeah. That was our family. Yeah. But the majority mm. was... You children, you can't even how speak. Can how can you not? It was so shameful mm. not to know Luganda. Mm. But we could communicate. I found it so ridiculous. And to go even deeper, when we were with in our father's side of the family, now it becomes an attack on to my mother. Yes. yes. Mm. How, can, how can't you teach your children mm. Luganda? Mm. What, what is that language they think they are speaking? Mm. And you know, we would hear that. And now we are here, we are kids. We don't know what to say. Nobody wants, is talking to us. Mm. And when they speak to us, they're speaking to us in Luganda. And by the way, they would have a real conversations with us that we didn't understand. Mm. And, you were meant to and we were meant to respond. But we couldn't. We are there. Mm. And then there are people around are laughing. And you know, because the families are big, mm. there are many people. Mm. So you're just there. Mm. You've come from the, your home being loved. My parents were brought up in a very loving home. So you come from love to what looked like hate. Mm. Yeah. And yet you, they have yeah. told you that this is your family. Mm. This is your blood. Yeah. You have to be with them. You need them. Mm. You know what we started doing? You see me, I speak a lot. But when I'm among my family, I don't talk. Silence. Silence. Mm. They ridiculed us. I kept quiet. Mm. I just kept quiet. Because now what are you going to do? You're going to yeah. beat me. Mm. I just keep quiet. And that was it. Like, that's how, uh, what our visits used to look like. Yeah. Until a point when, and you know, there was a point where I thought my parents would defend us or say something, but they also couldn't. Mm. For what reason? Yeah. I will never know. Yeah. I will never know. Mm. Because these were their siblings. Mm. I can only imagine, I have been in places where my brother has shut me off for something I said to his daughter. Really? And I think that's the way it should, it should be. be. It should be, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then I come back to my sense and I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't, it, I shouldn't maybe have said that. Yeah. Or maybe I shouldn't have done that or whatever. And I'm like, you know, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then it's, you know, yeah. and, but that didn't, again, they did the best that they knew. What did your mom say? It was the best, well, time it time was the best that they knew. So I will never know. I've never had that conversation with them. I don't know. Mm. Because I cannot be faulted for not knowing a language at 10 years old. Mm. I grew up in a home. That only spoke in English. Yeah. My parents speak Luganda very fluently, okay. but never to us. Mm. They mm. don't. Pumla, you know your submission has triggered me in all sorts <laughs> of... So sorry. That was us. <laughs> that, that was us. It just started even with our names. Me, I knew that our surname was Kimbugwe. Then they told us, you are Chimbugwe. My sister's name always was Guy Villa Kimbugwe. They said Guy Villa mm -hmm. or Javila. <laughs> <laughs> then when you wow. go to visit, if other people are standing, maybe they are greeting. Mwe, mufukamire. And if, if someone else spoke about it, it sounds like it was just a little thing. thing. But I know what it felt like. Yeah. Yeah. You walk into a room and they all look at you with this thing of, until the Bazungus have come. come. Yeah. Then they would say, you see the problem of marrying, what do they call them? Abazu Banama Wanga. Banama eh? Wanga. <laughs> they would always say that about mom. Yet mom went out of her way to land yeah. Luganda. But the accent wasn't a hundred. Of course. You know, and it has triggered me because even with my kids, 
if they you say see things it, like that, yeah. but lucky enough, when they're like, hey, Chuka, these kids don't speak Luganda, I say, are they Baganda? Ah. Are they? No, they're because not. Because in their village, yeah. everybody speaks English, but man, yeah. you've spoken about it. Yeah, just no, me, it, it really ch it shook me to my core. It, it really bothered me. And I decided to play that game of silence. I just kept quiet, kept quiet. We had no choice. When my, our parents were going, we had to go with them. But let me tell you what happened that day. I moved to campus mm -hmm. and did not have to go anymore. Yeah. They don't even know who I am or what I'm like. I think they just see me here on Bump Love. Hey. And then they say, Kale, that is our... Yeah, and that's how they talk. Yeah. And then they send messages, uh, what? Now, now they are speaking. Now they are listening to me. I'm speaking English. Mm. Now they are listening to me. <laughs> now they are sending messages and clips to my parents. <laughs> when it's time for to, to, to now... Uh, mm -hmm. To, to, to throw praises and accord and, and be as if one of us. Now, now, one now of they've us. come. Yeah. My, mom, my dad called me the other time about a sick aunt. And said, oh, by the way, you guys, this aunt is not well, she's sick. But this was one of the biggest perpetrators. Yes. The worst yes. perpetrators. Yeah. I picked and I said, dad, I am over 30. Mm -hmm. I live in my own house. Mm -hmm. You don't feed me. You don't clothe me. You, do, you, you cannot give me an instruction at this age. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That lady doesn't live far from me. Mm -hmm. That saying, uh, him, he was saying, in your free time, pass by her. She's not okay. You'll make her feel better. She did not make me feel better when I was a child. Right? If anything, yeah. she made me feel bad. She yeah. made me feel terrible. It was like she, they were on a mission to kill my esteem, kill my confidence, right. kill everything that I was strengthened to be just because I freaking did not know Luganda. Luganda. What the hell? What is Luganda? Is there a, a prize for it? Yeah, to be able to right. speak a vernacular. Mm -hmm. And you see, this is the thing. Like, me, I wish that I could speak 50 languages. Exactly. Because we all, you can't be there and you don't want to know the language. Yeah. I wish exactly. I knew it fully. It, it was not my fault. It's not like I was there and I was belittling the people speaking vernacular. Mm -hmm. No, I wished I could. And eventually, I did learn it. I learned vernacular in my high school because where I went for high school, they encouraged us to speak the language. Yes, we even had Luganda lessons, but we were not one of those schools where they would put on you a sack, you know, because you spoke Luganda, yeah. yeah. Where I went to high school, they encouraged us to speak Luganda because the foundation ideally was more Chiganda culture. Mm. So I literally learned Luganda there, and I really wanted to learn it. Yeah. I couldn't be there and I don't want to learn. But now when I started even to learn, now the problem became the mistakes I was making. Yes. The accent that I was saying certain words. We are, yeah. you know, and now, now, now that dynamic progressed into, morphed into that of now the mistakes, not even that I'm learning the language, but because, and you know, I, I remember I would send messages to people and because I'm always willing to learn, I would send some, a message to somebody and say, what is this word or what does it mean? And somebody would send me back and say, you mean the whole number two of you, you, can, you don't even know what this word yeah. means. I, I, honestly, like that is even just now from normal people yeah. that we live with, that even you never try even normal Uganda than you. Like, why do you care? What is it? Did they give you, is there an award? Are they giving you an extra food? Is there going to be an extra seat in heaven for you because you know a different language? And the same, by the way, happens on the English front. People who also belittle other people for not knowing proper English, they cannot express yeah. themselves in English, they don't, even that, it's the exact same problem. Same thing, yeah. So for me, mine was that. And me, I just drew a boundary yeah. and I cut off. I only see them when there's a loss in the family or a marriage. <laughs> you should go see your, your same. No, I went on oh, my own did. terms. Okay, yeah. not yeah. after. I passed by her on my own terms, but I only did because I wanted her to meet her grandchildren. I didn't ah, do it for me. Okay. I took my, my, my nieces, my nephews, my son. Mm. Okay. I did the, it for them All to right. know their family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also because the children of those singers and mamas were good to us. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yes. this, this was certain, the relatives were mostly the gen, my parents' siblings. Mm. Yeah. Their children, who are my cousins, were split in half. Yeah. There were those who were bad manners, those who like, cut them off along with their parents. Mm. But there were those who really embraced us and loved us. And I've always leaned more Towards into them. those ones. The other ones, yeah, they just see me here on Bump Love. Mm. By the way, <laughs> yeah. that really reminds me about toxic people who think that when they are talking to children, they do not understand. They bring all kinds of toxic behavior. Mm. Speak to them badly because they are kids. Trust me. You're going to need that kid when you grow older, and they will not be there because of your bad manners. That's so, Mwed Deko. Mwed Deko. Yeah. And I, I think for me, it has reminded me, there is a meme that was going around, I think actually goes around Christmas time, of two, like two village women 
gossiping. Mm. And people attribute words to them around Christmas time. Mm -hmm. They don't know that anyone has seen it. What does it say? People just put words uh, about on, on they, it. They usually eh? create different scenarios. Yeah, different scenarios. Mm. That you know that one, that is someone's son. That can is you imagine? Son's daughter. Yes, can you come imagine? Yes, come from hey. Hey. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I always feel like that is someone's parent. That would be my yes, parent. That would be my auntie. You, get, yeah. you, you go to the village for Christmas and you just don't fit in. Because they're yeah. looking at your dress code. Yeah. They're looking at you and yeah. saying, okay, this one went to Kampala. Now she's small. Did she abode? You know, they will forge stories yeah. around you. Yeah. <laughs> Especially but for the young girls at Kampala. Very yeah. toxic, you know, you yeah. go back to the, you don't want to go to your village because mm. of that toxicity around it. You, you grow big, then they'll say, maybe you're pregnant. Oh, dear. Or the way you're dressed, they'll mm. say, now this one, maybe she's a mala. You know, they, they will say so many things around yeah. those things. Mm. So every time I see that number around Christmas and I say, mm -mm, I that's know. someone's mother. Those two women who go see. Yes, I remember. remember. It's usually yeah. when you're calling. It's usually when you're calling. I know. I know. Me too. She has brought some Uganda man. I'm thinking. I forget always shows me that Really, that is our society. That, that, is, is, that is it. There's a lot of manipulation, a lot of lying. And I think for our mothers, usually they would say they are witches. You get married into a family, if they, if they don't like you, mm. yeah. they say you bewitched their son. Hey. And that rumor yeah. goes oh, around. around. Oh, yeah. my Tanzanian mother. Oh, yeah. So it oh. goes around and oh, they call dear. your mother a witch. Oh, and then the oh. children, you suffer because your mom is a witch. Oh, dear. Yeah. Yeah. When she's not even a witch. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, Sunday, um, toxic people as we know them, are uh, usually a product of toxic environments. Yes. Um, like her mom said, mm. it's what she knew. Yeah. Um, and yet most times they are unaware mm. of their toxic traits. Mm. How can somebody identify a toxic parent or a toxic relative? What are some of the things or signs to look out for? Traits. I think that the things that we look out for, one is that you, you yourself, you can feel that something is not right. Mm. If someone is constantly lying, they will tell lies about you. Mm. You know yes. someone in the family will be like a, they will lie, or say things about you, or they will tell only one side of the story, like they've said someone, maybe you've had a conversation, they will share only their side, their of, side the of the story. Even if it is a WhatsApp conversation, if they are sharing it, they will delete parts that, inc that they will, where, you know, like um, where they have a role in that conversation, mm. and then they will make you feel guilty, yeah. Yeah. You're, the, you're the bad one. Then also, they don't ask for forgiveness, no accountability, they're not mm, responsible. Yeah. Someone hurts you continuously, continuously, maybe you tell them what you're doing to me is not okay. But they don't see a reason why they should stop, so they continuously hurt you. Mm. Um, the other one, obviously, is manipulation. Yeah. And manipulation mm. is in, on all levels. Mm. Yeah. On all levels. They will lie, they mm. will make you feel guilty, they will, you know, say stories about you that are not true. Mm. So manipulation is on all levels. Then um, sometimes passive aggressiveness, mm. passive aggressive, silent treatment. You go ask your mother <laughs> so for something and she keeps and quiet. She keeps quiet. <laughs> you ask your, your sibling for something and she keeps quiet. Yeah. So that's silent treatment. Even for our spouses, you mm. find even someone is asking and you're not answering. Really, that is that is toxic behavior because that is emotional abuse. Mm. Yeah, it's abuse. It is abuse. So there are so many things that we can look out for, and I think if we all look within ourselves, me, I'm saying all of us mm. yeah. have that toxic trait. So please go back, sit in your room, and say, what am I doing that doesn't make me a good person? Yeah. 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 Sometimes even you need to journal when you're talking to your children, and you say that something I'm doing is not right. Write down the things that you do mm. that you feel, and then you'll have a moment of reflection and say. I have done this, it is not right. I have lied to my friend. I gossiped about my friend, was it okay? Mm. And that's how you become a better person. Mm. Yeah. So mm. I think we need to, we can do better. We, we really can do can. better. The parents that our, mistake, that our parents made the mistakes is because they didn't know better. Oh, yes. But I think for us, we, have, we, can, we are exposed. We can learn from We can mistakes. learn from so many, you know, online. Mm. We can get therapy. We have social support. So let's do better. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. What are your toxic traits, lady? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we should beat a torch in ourselves. Right? Mm. Yeah, I already kind of started on mine. Mm. Yeah. yeah mine, just like, is mine is so bad because it is so good. Mm. Yes, it's confusing. That. Yes, confusing. Yeah. that obsessive need yeah. to work and whatever is. Mm. Some people see it as hard working mm. and yeah. everything, but uh, mm -mm. it can be mm. something else. Yeah. But first chance, I. <laughs> <laughs> I think mine has. So mine, I'm working on it. I think toxic traits are like um. This how they like you know like how you can say I'm an alcoholic. 
but you haven't drunk in 20 years. Yes. Yeah, so I might say that mine used to be aggression, but I'll say mine is aggression okay. because it's a daily, daily work in progress. It's actually a daily fight. Yeah, so I noticed that um, there's a time when I was really aggressive, you know? There's a difference between aggression, uh, aggressive and assertive. Yeah. I am an assertive person, yeah. but I used to confuse my assertion with aggression yeah. sometimes. And then I realized that there was a part of me that was just angry. Mm. And I just didn't know why. Mm. Like I was just angry, like someone would say something and I'm so triggered by it and I respond angrily whether it was towards a family member, to a colleague, to my child, to a friend, to random border guy on the streets, you know? And I, I, I realized when I start working on my anger, like I didn't have, now because I'm angry, now I've, you'd think that because I've released it, I should feel better. I would feel worse yeah. even, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I've, now I've hurt you and I'm also, I'm also hurt, hurt, you know? So when I realized that, and I don't even, I won't even lie, I don't know the point when I realized what that was, but when I did realize that, I just started working on my anger. And yeah, I just chose, actually for me it was a choice, yeah. to just be happier and better to other people and just breathe positivity and happiness and kindness. I can feel that thing come sometimes, like mm -hmm. someone can say something so stupid. And I, yeah. I want to... It's a right thing. <laughs> And you suppress. But I'd hoosa, hoosa, hoosa. <laughs> and then I yeah, talk. I, you know, I either keep quiet if I, because sometimes you don't even have to say anything. Yeah. Other times I, I try to guide or speak better or lovingly. So mine, yeah. I think, is aggression. I think mine is um, silent treatment, especially when mm. I have a trigger. Girl. Yeah, <laughs> someone triggers me, but it's something that I've, I'm working on. Yeah. I learned mm. that it's not taking me anywhere. So why mm. are you silent? So I will tell you off now. I don't. I mm. don't let you know my emotions take mm. me away into silence. Because at the end of the day, you're silent with someone. They don't even know why you're silent. Why you're silent. That was a toxic trait. Like. I would be fighting with my husband. He's like, what? Nga for him is living his best <laughs> life. You're know, here, silent, treating him. I'm like, no, 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 no. I need to come out of this. Yeah. Um, and when, 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 when we asked about those toxic traits, I was introspecting and thinking, but what is it? What mm. is it? Because I'm daily doing an assessment. You know, I'm daily doing an assessment. And I'm glad my mom didn't carry it on on me. Mm. So many times... I kill it. I really don't like being around toxic environments, so I try mm. to not be toxic. Yourself. Yeah, but I'm, I'm killing, I'm tr fighting that Kasailin mm. treatment one. Passive aggressive. Yeah, it's yeah. passive aggression. Mm. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. As I looked at all of these things, I was like, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Like, passive aggressive seemed to read most me. Yeah. You guys know me. Yeah. I will keep on. <laughs> you, and you can stew on a I thing. Can't I know. Know. By the time it comes, it comes out, out, out one year. Yeah. It is like a vo uh, yeah. volcano. <laughs> and please note, when it finally comes out, it comes out when somebody has done something. Very yes. No. You're triggered by something. Like, but you mean your driver can leave talk the car like and yeah. or you can talk to you like that? And I'm like, hmm, that's how that person mm. is. Then three years later, you find me slaughtering the human being. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, hold up. What we happened? Thought, yeah. mm. This guy used to do these things and you were okay. okay. Was with that pent up yeah. thing. And yeah. guess who showed me? Mama, really? Oh wow! Our kids know us. They know they us do. so they well. Do know yeah. us in she and told out. me, Mama, why don't you speak when you don't like something? Mm. I'll just smile. Wow! I have people who will borrow five million from me today. They come back next week and you give more, and I'll give it to you. Then you come back after a month. Then three months later, I even find you talking shit about me. But now you have like my eight months. And you can even add them another one. I, I will add you. <laughs> then three years later, oh, I'll wow. give you 30K. Yeah. And then you don't return it. Mm. Then I should. Mm. Oh <laughs> and anyone who says it's like, but it was just 30K, then I start. Do you remember? Mm. Do, do you, you remember? Re so Asante said, Mama, no, do you remember? Don't keep it. Say, 
say now, now. Like not, do you do you not do you remember? That's our new slogan. Oh, that's that's already not do you remember? Yes. She's like, remember. Mama, say now, 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 yes. now. And because of that, it has mm. really, really helped me work out my even with my sons. Mm. Now immediately they come, they say, and I'm like, by the way, I don't like that. Before I'd be like, okay. <laughs> then a month later you scratch the car and I start oh so yeah that one is for me and <laughs> lucky know. enough I think the first step is identify yeah okay. the second you identify it then you're yeah. able to you know steer away from yeah. it yeah. yeah so no mine is uh, and I think I have a tendency to be passive aggressive but there's a slight difference I think I am able to do in our work to let things go Okay. Yeah. After a while, after some process, yeah. yeah. Uh, so there will be no. Maybe I will project. Yeah. But yeah. after period. in that period, yes, period. as I'm doing the work. Mm -hmm. But after I'm done, like after I've released, and I'm like, mm, that person owes me money and it's cool. I move on, and like I'm not upset with you. Yeah. But obviously, I'll put you in a certain category. Like maybe I. This is how I will deal with this person moving forward. But my <laughs> my toxic trait, and this one I discovered when I got married, was I, I can be critical. Mm. Yeah, mm. I can be critical, yes. and and the way it is masked with me is I, I have a way with words, so it it can sound. Mm. Yeah, it can sound. I can I can Someone cover up my being critical. To me, it sounds like I have served you a really nice meal, but in you, you are feeling attacked <laughs> and offended. So my husband bore the brunt of my being critical. And eventually I discovered, I was like, oh, wait a minute. All I ever do is point out what he has done wrong, mm. what he's not doing the way I want him to do it. And I've noticed it's not just with my husband. It's with things I see on social media or things that I see on the road. I'm yeah. like, why is that person dressed like that? Why are they, why have they tied their hair? I'm like, but they're not you, mm. right? Not Let you. them be. Why do you want them to tie their hair? Like, mm. So yeah, just having that open mind, I think helps me now relate with people without being critical of them mm. even when i'm being critical i'm now learning to catch myself like mm. you're being critical there's there's no that's them yeah. that's their path that's mm. how they've chosen to live yeah. and then i think it also helps me become more empathetic like why why is angie passive aggressive mm. maybe it's something in her past yeah. maybe it's something mm. in her upbringing or maybe that's how she copes and she's working on it so i'm yeah. less critical because i'm allowing myself to be more more open-minded mm -hmm. yeah and i think all all these things that what the traits that we have mainly come from the environment we're raised you know they come from how we're raised they are that's why you find you like your mother you like your auntie or because you haven't processed some of the things you've gone through in school well, there was a lot of bullying in school mm -hmm. so you find you are bullied so you there is anger built up so it's building up or maybe you lacked control as a child now you, you feel the need to be in charge for me it's I feel like I need to have things done my way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if things are not going my way, I'll just get stressed and get stressed over nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Even when I am late, it bothers me. And my husband's like, but you're just late for one minute. Mm. But for me, it bothers me. Well, how can I be how late? I be late? Mm. Or why, why are people late? Yeah. You know, so the need to be in charge, the need for things to be perfect. Yeah. That's my trait, but I'm working on myself. <laughs> it's a process. Yeah. It's yeah. a process. All of us. It's a process, yeah. yes. Yeah. I think we've kind of touched um, the question I want to ask, but in your experience, mm. what would be the long-term effects of uh, being raised in that bad environment, that toxic environment? I think it, it depends because you see some people will actually thrive. Some people will thrive. You know, we are different yeah, regardless. Yeah. Then there is someone who may turn out exactly like that person they, that was very toxic to them. Others, self-esteem issues. You find someone really, yeah. because you've been belittled all your life, so now you come to believe everything that has been said of you. Yeah, yeah. You know, someone says maybe you don't look nice, you, you don't look good, so you grew up fearing yourself. I have seen someone who thought, you know, she, she told me that she believed um, they used to say that she has very big breasts. Eh? So she felt, mm -mm, so she would even walk like this. Yeah. And up to now, she walks while you know. Okay. Yeah, because you've been, that's what you've been told. So you come to believe yeah. what everything that has been told of you. So that the effects depend on who has experienced it, yeah. but also have they healed? Mm. So you can't really tell what is going to happen of the person until when they have grown up and maybe. You can say maybe this went through this one and this one went through this. Mm. Different ways. Some people will go to God and pray and they'll be fine. Yeah. yeah so different people, different experiences. Mm. Yeah. Anxiety? 
and anxiety. anxiety. A lot, yes, anxiety. Yeah. Anxiety, yes. I think exactly. the biggest one, though, I've, I've seen is uh, esteem issues. Yes. Actually, True. both. I've seen both self-esteem issues and anxiety. and anxiety. The ones I have known, like friends, people who have been close mm. to me and have expressed that toxicity within their home. Because I can only imagine. Now, imagine that toxicity that I experienced was with an extended family. I didn't have to live with these people. I didn't have to stay mm. with these people. When I went back to my home where I was more of the time, I was being affirmed. I was being loved. I was being... Mm. So anything that could have been done there was quickly offset mm. by the by where I was actually at in the time, my primary home. Mm. But now I can imagine if your primary home is my extended home. Yes. Yes. And so I know someone, a close friend of mine, who lived in that extended mm. environment. And when she grew, she did exactly what I did. Cut off mm. her immediate family. Yes. But I have seen her struggle yes. with self-esteem yes. issues, with anxiety, with people-pleasing behavior. Yes. You know, when you have a family eh, that God gave you, you know, there's something like, you have your people. Mm. These are my people. This is where I fit in. Mm. I'm talking about healthy families. Mm. This, these are my, like if all goes south, I will lean back into my family. Mm. Yeah. When you don't have a family, mm. now your social support becomes usually friends. friends. Mm. But remember, friendship mm. is conditional. Yeah. It is so conditional mm. that now you always have to be a better, a good person to your people. Yeah. So that, that they can always be there for you. Or not so, spill your secrets. Or not, yeah, like there's, there's oh, yeah. a certain <laughs> dynamic with friendship yes. that is not the same as a healthy family. Yeah. So I've seen those people have that struggle mm. where we've literally had to keep validating them, keep affirming them. Mm. They keep affirming themselves. Have you been amongst people who constantly affirm themselves? Because nobody really affirmed them when they were growing and up. And I say kudos to them. Yeah, yeah. that's their mechanism. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, kudos. that's their yeah. coping mechanism, and like, it's but working. Why? Yeah, but now and it's working. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I've mon I'm mostly on self-esteem and anxiety. Yeah. But I've also read somewhere. You know, people say family is everything. So I was reading some, and they were saying that's one of the most toxic statements you can ever say. When you say family is everything, meaning if I have grown up in this family and it has been so horrible to me. Why are you telling me family is everything? Mm. So that's something that we keep on telling people. Family is everything, but really, is it? It should be. It should it should be. be. But most times it's not. It and in our African, let's agree, our African setting, family, community is still it's everything. Still everything. Yeah. yeah. If, if it's, it's healthy, healthy yes. it can be everything. everything. Yeah. yeah. If it's, if not, it's, if it's unhealthy. Your and as we, you know, you can also be in an unhealthy family. You are all there in your unhealthiness. And you're happy. And you're okay. Yeah. yeah. Are you and really okay? Everything. You will you're just bleed on people. <laughs> in your dysfunctionality, yes. Then when the turbulent times come, come. Yeah. Because there's a family yeah. that lives you near know. where we live. Drunkards, manalayas, yeah. the chief, they, they are dance, always quarreling with people. Yeah. But guess what? They had each other's back. back. At the what? When they are gone, he yet again. And even you're looking inside and like, man, this is her really bad mannered, but guess what? Right. You'd also you'd be like, but if also in my family had my back like that. Right. Right, actually. <laughs> right, actually. Never never each other. Yes. So, yeah. I think we're just about ready to wrap up this episode. Yes. Thank you, ladies, for sharing. <laughs> thank you for sharing. Yeah. And thank you so much, Sandy, thank for weighing in, you. especially thank for you your so expert much. advice. Mm -hmm. So if you are out there and um, you've been triggered by this conversation here and there, I hope you took time off to rest. Sometimes, not every time watching the whole episode at once, <laughs> yeah? because sometimes it may be too much, yes. you know? I've, I've had been watched podcasts where I've been triggered and I you put a pause go, yeah. and I go back when I feel I am ready. So, and I know this is one of those that might have triggered mm. you. So if you did feel triggered, I do hope you can do some inner work to figure out what really is within you that needs to be healed mm. and then do the work to actually heal from it. Mm. I would advise you to get some counseling or therapy sessions. They are not the cheapest, I will not lie to you, mm -hmm. but your therapy could also be your community, your therapy could be your friends, your mm. therapy could be a close colleague, an elder, an aunt, an uncle, speak to somebody. Mm. There is always um, social support especially here in africa mm. yes i'm sorry to think yeah i'm not and today i've overtalked guess what and we love you for also it. that business of blaming your parents 
needs yeah. to stop. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It needs to stop. Yeah. You cannot be 30 years and you're still yeah. my mom, my wife. Mm -mm, yeah. mm -mm. Yeah. Organize yourself. I agree. There is a period, there is a period before which, yes, my parents, my parents, but after a certain age, honestly, now it's you. Yeah. Now the trauma so you, is you. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Childhood trauma cannot be there at 30, 35, 40. Because now you're not doing the work. Yeah. Do yeah. the work. The pa your parents raised you the best way they knew how. Yeah. Now you have gone a step further and recognized that there was something in that yeah. raising yeah. that there, was, mm. there were gaps. Mm. Yeah. Now you do the work. Do the Feel work. the gaps. Take you're grown. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's your responsibility. Educate yourself, Educate so, you're yourself. Better, you're better parent. so that you can be better. Mm. And for all of us, that's all we want for you, bump lovers. For each and every one of you to be a better person. Until next time, with love from Bump Love. Bump Love was brought to you by Unlimited Internet at unbeatable prices. Dial star 125 hash to activate your monthly unlimited internet. Airtel, a reason to imagine.